questions you have if you have concerns. So let's just um, share my screen. And there we go. Right, and let's talk a little bit. So a little bit about me first. I've, I'm actually retired now. I was an associate professor at the University of Warwick, um, responsible very much for implementing e-learning in a language uh, teaching environment. Um, and as part of my role as a French teacher, I got very involved in what, what we call virtual exchange. So virtual exchange essentially is a pedagogy built around encouraging people to collaborate and connect um, beyond their institutions with students in other institutions. Um, and uh, essentially an academic, um, uh, an academic uh, organization, which is uh, a not-for-profit, um, came to life in 2016. Uh, and that academic organization, Uni Collaboration, is where post retirement I continue to do a lot of my work specifically around open badges. Um, and we were uh, part of the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange um, initiative and spent three years um, encouraging people to connect. Uh, specifically between European institutions and the MENA region, the Middle East and North Africa. Um, and those are really the insights I'm going to share with you today. But I, as I said, I will be very grateful if you would also share your insights of using Open Badges. Um, I'm not going to visit the very basics of Open Badges in today's session. What I am going to look at and, and share with you is the approach that we've adopted um, having had the experience that we've had now in implementing open badges through Erasmus plus virtual exchange. So first, just to give you an idea of the scale um, of what the Erasmus plus virtual exchange initiative covered, as you can see, over the, that three year period, we had um, over 20,000 uh, young people engaged in virtual exchange. And that was not just students, that was always um, as well of course, their trainers and their teachers. Um, so we were looking to build capacity in this sort of activity, which is essentially digitally mediated, computer mediated um, connections, not all around language learning, um, very much around um, sharing and cultural exchange, um, and very much around building real meaningful connections between young people um, and helping them to help each other and to better understand each other. Um, so there are a whole set of um, impact reports published as part of that activity, uh, which, as I say, spanned a three year period and a sort of partner activity, which I was also involved in at the same time, uh, was an, uh, a European project called Evolve, uh, where we were looking at how we could uh, evolve teaching to better and teachers to better cope with the demands of virtual exchange. And of course, it couldn't really have come at a better time because the pandemic hit towards the end of those three years and the skills and the capacity building that we'd used were very quickly put to good use. Um, so I will share with you some further links in the chat uh, at the end of this um, presentation so you can uh, explore those and see a little bit more about what we did. But, but crucially, of course, we decided to recognize participation in virtual exchange using open badges. Um, and as a result of that, we learned a great deal about um, real experiences, user experiences of open badges. So just a quick, I'm going to be focusing more on the curation side of this slide today than on the creation, but we decided to uh, use Open Badge Factory uh, for the project, and we also used it for the Evolve project. And um, what we really wanted to do was to have a recognition system that was, uh, that had synergies with the activity that we were encouraging. And of course, really digital open badges were the best choice there. 
we wanted to be able to have an ecosystem of badges that helped people engage further in virtual exchange to, to cope with some of the sort of very demanding um, steps. There's a lot of work involved in planning a virtual exchange as, as a practitioner, but also in participating in a virtual exchange. It can be very challenging. You can be connecting with people with very different opinions to yourself. So there can be lots of um, quite personal and emotional things that you have to deal with and engage with, um, as well as pedagogic ideas as well. So that process really, and the learning from that process is what I hope um, to share with you today. Um, but most particularly, the idea that in fact, once you get a once you get an open badge, it becomes your possession, um, and that can be a challenge because that's something new to a lot of people. Um, but I, I really think the open badge passport system uh, that. Um, Open Badge Factory has in place is, has been really, really helpful. And I'm really encouraged to see that some of the changes and developments um, that are happening there. So why, why is this difficult? Why, why don't people jump up in the air and say, badges, you're going to give me a digital badge. Wow, wonderful. Well, because it creates another set of headaches for people because people understand getting a paper certificate at the end of a course. Um, they, they like the idea of having something physical in their hand that they can show and share with a prospective employer. And increasingly, we're seeing institutions actually sort of supporting through alumni networks um, some interaction between their graduates or their, um, their students through an institution in a physical way, pre-pandemic, obviously. So isn't that enough? I mean, that's I think that's quite an, an obvious question. You know, why do we need something different? Well, there are many reasons that because those these questions often arose within our um, within our activities, um, often from um, participants who perhaps needed to show a course completion um, recognition. Uh, and we're more familiar with doing that through a paper certificate. So what we started to do was to put in place um, some messaging, if you like, around um, why we chose open badges as our recognition system. Um, we particularly made the case about how easy it is, particularly in a digital um, environment, to falsify paper um, certificates and paper statements. Uh, whereas using open badges, you have uh, an infrastructure that actually makes it much more difficult to falsify a badge. Um, but our main um, emphasis really on our messaging was around how important it is to when you're when you collected digital open badges, to have a way of thinking about how you curate those in order to share your experiences with any particular audience as, as, is, as befits really what you want to achieve. And I think for us, particularly with virtual exchange, where we have a pedagogy that's not widely known or understood, we made the case that in fact, the only way of actually communicating this to new people was to make those open badge collections um, as clear as possible and share them as widely and as openly as possible through your social media or whatever, and also to connect with others so that you can network so that people start to realize that there is a body of expertise, a body of people who have had training um, in virtual exchange and who understand how to go about it and also future possibilities with virtual exchange. So if I look sort of thematically at the distinctions between the two, I kind of, I mean, I hesitate to use the word dumb, but it makes certificates look a bit dumb. They're kind of static and they are signifiers of the end of something. So they become historic very quickly. And when we actually use digital open badges, we have dynamic artifacts. We have 
um, artifacts that we can then curate and contextualize um, and an open badge passport gives us really useful tools to do that um, and also ways of signaling where we can go next and discovering other possible routes for learning so for me this is uh, a way of moving away from the tick box uh, approach to learning where you learn what you're told to learn and you take an exam that measures whether you've got it or not um, uh, towards something that is more about hertagogy, more about my self-directed learning so I've done this I've accomplished this all these other people have done it as well that's interesting what are they doing now how are they using it where could I go next so it's sort of inciting curiosity which as a practitioner and teacher for over 30 years that curiosity is something I know is very powerful and very important and if I look critically as well at how we use technology in education and I think we have to definitely be critically uh, aware of what which tools we use and how we use them I think it's really important that we think about technology not as a solution but technology as a as a medium for making meaningful activities or supporting meaningful activities. And I think Facer and Selwyn make that very clear um, in this uh, report that they published recently. So I mentioned curating um, your presence. And uh, I, I want to sort of send a round of applause out to uh, Open Badge passport particularly for their pages tool because very quickly I realized that was going to be really helpful and useful and one of the things we encouraged all our um, trainers to do was once they picked up their training badges to go into open badge passport and then contextualize those badges so very quickly very easily I'm sure many of you in the room have already used this pages functionality you can pull together um, web pages that you can share uh, as widely or as it, in a restricted way as you choose to do um, and draw the badges that are relevant to a particular section of your practice um, and make those um, make those make sense to someone else uh, and that's an important process I think that reflection on okay I've got all these badges why <laughs> it actually helps to stop and think about them and uh, think about why in fact they can be useful to you and how you can use them but it surprised me over the three-year period just how few people actually sort of got involved in the pages so I made little video tutorials and things to help support that activity um, because I, I very much agree with Vygotsky that actual, actually artifacts can um, action, activity around artifacts is very powerful for learning. So pages, great. That was a good, that was a good start. Um, but by then we've been using Open Badge Passport for three and a half years. And when I found out about the spaces um, area that's just come about now within Open Badge Passport, I was really intrigued. And, and this is an area that I'm, we're just starting to explore. You can see uni collaboration down at the bottom here, the bottom left. So this is like a corral within the wider open spaces. If we're thinking, I'm thinking Wyoming and places like this in America where you have huge vistas of land, where Open Badge Passport is this huge area but it's sometimes really nice to have a little space within that that is your niche. So it's the part of Open Badge Passport that actually is for people who've come through um, Open Badge to Open Badge Passport, perhaps with their badges from Uni Collaboration. So I thought that would be an interesting um, area to investigate a little bit more closely. I can see messages come into the chat, so I will take a little bit of a pause now and let's just. Um, come into the chat and see if I can address any queries or questions. Um, let me just have a quick chat, a quick look in the chat. Let's just open that up. So perhaps I could just ask, I can't see 
any questions in the chat at the moment, Eric, but perhaps I could just ask you if there are, oh, nice, nice, Don, yes. Thank you, I like that, a community of communities. It's all about the community of practice at the end of the day, isn't it? And it's very easy to lose that practice within a wide open space where everybody's practice is slightly different. Um, so just scanning down, yes, I think, Don, that's a wonderful way of looking at it. Um, that, you know, having, it, it's not a closed area, it's a very much, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about how we set up our spaces. Um, but it's it's a little bit more familiar, if you like. You'll be surrounded by more familiar people. Uh, yes, and I'd also draw attention to Don's comment there about the keeping badges weird. Um, very important to me too. Okay, I will continue. Let me just pick up my share screen again and uh, come back to my presentation. So. Essentially, we now got um, a space within Open Badge Passport that is themed. And the theme you can see here is our, this is one of our um, images from our Moodle platform that we use for our training. And, and already straight away, this is kind of like a door within a much wider uh, community that says, oh yeah, you've been involved in uni collaboration, come along and uh, have a look at what other people who've been involved with uni collaboration have been doing. Um, so hopefully somewhere that feels a bit more familiar. And what we've done is made that corral a space to find each other. And that I think is very much the, the um, thinking behind the spaces functionality. So within Open Badge Passport, on the right hand side, you can see here, I've come into the uni collaboration space. And the first thing we did was just invite our um, trainers. So uni collaboration trainers who are already familiar with issuing badges and working with our, our participants and trainees. Um, and what's really nice about this space is we can publish little uh, a little blog, if you like, as sort of updates of news to uh, share with the community. As I, as I mentioned, we've been training for over three years now. So that's quite a large community of people. And, and we want them to keep in touch with us. Um, very often they run multiple virtual exchanges over a period of time. We also want to recognize um, the work that they've been doing in that area. So Spaces gives us a way of making a sort of community hub and connecting and seeing each other. And it allows us to upload existing badges. And then anybody who has had those badges can come along and find us and join the community. So we're gradually increasing the number of badges that, um, that we recognize within the space, um, and starting with our trainers. Uh, and moving gradually towards our student participants as well. Um, once these um, qualified, if you like, these people who, who have the badge um, arrive in the site, uh, we can also give them roles. So we can enable them to become um, issuers of badges and recognize each other so that we can reach out and draw others with, into the community. And I really like this little, the little heart shape. So we can congratulate each other on additional badges and recognition that we've got along the way. So really what we're trying to do is to build that community and to strengthen those connections. Another function here that I really like is the mini maps function. So this is a little bit like making a little Metro map. Um, and we've got a very basic mini map in place at the moment, but as you can see, it's a work in progress because the final station is about to be opened. It hasn't been opened yet. And this helps lead um, people who are currently um, participants who have joined perhaps webinars or training with us and encourages them to go along and learn how to design a, a project and then how to become um, perhaps a trainer and support other people and make their way to the implementer badge, um, which recognizes that they have implemented uh, various uh, iterations of virtual exchange over a period of time. Um, and this is just one example, but you can obviously come up with all sorts of routes 
through your badges or maybe incorporate badges from other trusted um, providers as, as ways or pathways, if you like, to uh, maintain and continue those learning opportunities. So what Spaces is giving us is a set of tools really to support our community, the, the news tool or blog tool, if you like. The pages tool, so this is where I can actually show um, pages that I've made already to other people within that community. Um, and it's, it's a little bit like, one of the things that always concerns me is that, um, you know, it's, it's great to say, oh, you can use this technology, it will it'll allow you to do X, Y, and Z. But actually what we need are models, we need scaffolding, we need um, people showing us the way. So being able to share with other people within our community what I have done with pages or what they have done with their badges um, is a great way of giving us ideas and helping spur us into action, um, making things a little bit more concrete by giving examples. And also, of course, those tools help inform our community. Well, Open Badges, it had never really occurred to me, but I recently um, did a talk for... Uh, Future Teacher 3.0, which is a network uh, that look at uh, best practice for teaching in higher education. And they approached me and asked if I would talk a little bit about how open badges can be used as learning analytics. I'd never really made that connection particularly because learning analytics, the, the discourse around learning analytics always smacks to me of, you know, big brother watching you. But this is a very different way of collecting analytics. So this is a this is a way of showing and seeing which badges are meaningful, because the most meaningful badges will be shared and contextualized and be actively used. So actually being able to see that activity is really helpful to us as we design and continue to train, um, but also just to everybody within that community. Um, to see where the value is, to see how people are valuing um, the activities that we do. So that sort of information is really helpful. And we have we've only been using um, spaces since uh, since January, really, since since Christmas. So um, it's early days for us yet, but I will keep a watching brief and I will certainly uh, share with the community how this um, pans out over time. Um, so there's some just some information here I want to share with you on the slides. So that's my ORCID ID, which is my researcher ID, and, and that's uh, where you'll find information about the papers that I've published. And I've just selected um, two more detailed. Well, the first one is more detailed. The second one is very much a, a quick read. Um, information about the thinking behind how we've implemented open badges. Uh, and I hope you find those useful. I'll, I'll share again in the chat um, a link to exactly um, these so that you can uh, investigate them and download them. These are all openly available. I didn't mention at the beginning, but I am an open practitioner. So I always expect uh, to share the work that I've done openly. I'll just quickly um, pop on here. This is a uni collaboration website. So as you can see here, you can see how we've gone about pulling the messaging together to help people see um, what to do with their open badges and where to go. Um, and we now have, well, we've, we've got a, a, an FAQ in a series of languages there, um, which you can download from that link, which I'll just copy and pop into the chat for you in a second. And let me just stop the, stop the screen share. And let's just pop this into the chat. So if you can see a little bit more about the strategies that we've been trying to use in order to support uh, people's adoption of open badges and in order to make them work for them. Um, because that's the, the, the thing I think that worries me the most is that, you know, you can give lots and lots of open badges, but in fact, people need examples of what they can do with them once they've got them. Yeah, so the activity around open badges can be really, really useful. It's one of the things that drew us first 
to um, Open Badge Factory was the map, um, uh, you know, visual ways of seeing who has got which badges and where, uh, where they're being shared and what's being done with them. So Don, I'm going to address your question first. Where would I like to see things develop further? Well, I'd, I'd really like to see um, more cross fertilization, if you like, from um, those people who have um, used open badges and perhaps are using spaces or pages. Uh, so I'm always very interested in hearing that. Um, the Association for Learning Technology um, has made great use of open badges, digital open badges, um, ALT. Uh, so I'm looking specifically to them for what they're going to do next and how they're using it. Within uh, my own context in unique collaboration, I'd really like to see that um, role capacity of um, spaces helping us grow more trainers, helping us um, consolidate our network um, and, and really helping us push for greater recognition of activities that are perhaps not traditional and not currently um, recognized. Uh, so I think that's really important. It's important that um, people who uh, organize learning and uh, development within institutions think about how they're going to take notice of the curations of open badges that increasingly people will put before them. Um, so I'd like to see greater acknowledgement of the good, a good deal of effort that actually goes in to curating badges. Curating badges of others, that's an interesting, I suppose in a way we're kind of doing that in spaces, but as, essentially what we're trying to do is to help um, individuals think about how they use the assets that we ha they have and their open badges and how they help to coalesce a community around them. Um, so essentially I'm looking at that. I know different platforms do it in different ways, but I have to say the Open Badge Factory and Open Badge Passport uh, metaphor to me for this sort of activity is something people can grasp and understand. So factory is where they're made. Passport is a way of gaining entitlement to new things, new learning, going somewhere else, um, taking control of that journey. So that metaphor really makes sense um, to me. And I think it's quite um, easy to communicate to others. Um, I know different platforms deal with it in slightly different ways. 